Hey guys, this is the Polyglot Programmer and today we're going to talk about Collisions on the Go.Engine. And so let's get started. And Collisions on the Go.Engine is governed by, a, by one node called Collision Shape 2D. You probably notice that every time that we add some type of body, it doesn't matter what type in our scene, it asks for a Collision Shape 2D. So for example, if we come in here and we add a static body, it's gonna, it has this exclamation point and it's asking for a collision shape, right? And I'm just gonna leave this guy right here because we're gonna use it right after, right? And the collision shape 2D, all it does is sets the boundary for the collision, right? So you can see that uh, the ground, for example, which has a complex collision, uh, it has a concave polygon shape, right? Um, I have a player and my player is this guy over here, it's a capsule. And so if I select the collision shape, you're going to see that it has the collision shape has a capsule sh capsule shape, right? And the same goes for the wall, right? I have a wall, I have a collision shape, and again, it has a box shape right here, right? So this is all you need to know about the collision shape 2D or 3D. Everybody that you have on your on your world, you're going to have you're going to need to have a collision shape 3D which sets the boundaries and the shape of your collision, right? The next thing that you need to know is about layers and masks, right? So on every layers and masks are what defines basically what's going to collide with what, right? So and you're not going to find the layers on the collision shape 2D, the 3D. You're going to find the layers on the parent, right? So for example, for the ground, the parent for this guy, the guy that has the configuration for what collides with what is the static body. For the player is this character body 3D and for the wall it's again a static body which I did cover on my Mesh Instance 3D video so again go check it out right after this video. And what are layers and masks right so layers as you can see it over here on player let's take the player for, for instance layers they define on which physics layer the object is in so uh, you have 24 predefined layers and it basically defines, okay, this guy is part of the layer one or two or three or even multiple. You can have one guy that is part of multiple layers. No problem at all. All you need to do is select it over here, right? Um, and what about masks? Masks also define physical layers, but it defines the physical layers that the body will listen to and detect. So what will the body collide against, right? And um, what important thing to, 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 to note is that by default, when you create a static mesh, for example, it automatically, and any other body, automatically goes to layer one and mask one. So uh, when by default, if you do not change at all, any object on your scene, everything is gonna collide with everything, right? So that's why you ideally would use layer and masks to improve performance on your game without having to code anything at all, right? And we're gonna see how this works, how this work uh, in a minute. So here we have our scene, which is my little character right here. Movement is already coded up. Again, I do have a video on 3D character movement. Go check that out. I have a couple of walls. I have a, a floor. Our walls are composed of a mesh, instance 3D, a static body and a collision shape, right? And I have two of them. And you can see here that my walls are static body. I, they're using the default configuration. So I have the static body here and here. They're both layer and mask one. And my player as well, I layer and mask one. The difference is my player is a character body 2D, which has physics attached to it. So, but that doesn't matter for this, this video at all, actually. So, okay, so if I hit play, right? You're gonna see that okay I'm moving right here and boom I cannot go through this wall right why because everything is one everything's set to one right so let's let's change that that a little bit so let's make this wall right here let's make this part of layer two right so let's see what happens right so as soon as as I, as I made that guy part of layer two you can see that I can walk through it but I can still not walk through this one and why is that right the reason for that is that this guy is part of layer two and is the and this guy is part of layer two and the player is part of layer one 
but the player is not detecting anything from layer layer two so it just goes right through it right and this guy this guy no this guy is part of layer one and mask layer one so that's why the player cannot walk through it right and <clears throat> When you're dealing with these numbers, they can get a bit confusing, right? So one, two, you're not gonna remember, so what's what? Sometimes you, you can have a dozen different types of objects in your scene. Uh, you can have walls, floors, crates, furniture, whatever. And so you wanna be able to, to easily identify those, right? So one thing that you can do in your project is that you can come to project, project settings, and right at the bottom here, you're gonna find under layer names, you're gonna find 3D physics. And here you have all the 20, 32 predefined layers that you could use in the inspector, but here you can give them names. So let's, so for layer one, let's use, let's set the player, for layer two, let's set wall. And let's create another one, let's create a crate, right? Uh, and close, all right, awesome. So now, if we select the player, here and go to la to layers this still says one this is not going to change but if you hover over it it says player right here two it says wall three it says crate so let's set the walls to the walls right um and this guy is already a wall great right and the player is only detecting against <clears throat> mask one so let's try. Okay. So now these guys are both walls, but the player is not detecting against the walls. So let's come in here. No, not here. Let's go to the player, right? And now let's tell it to. Yeah, let's tell it to to detect collisions with layer two, which are walls. You can see that they're the same, right? Masks and layer they're both physical layers. It's not different types of properties. The same. They're the same type of properties, right? So now that we come here, you can see that now I cannot walk through it. It's simple as that, right? And let's 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 create another example here. So we did create a um, static body 3D here, which has nothing in it. Let's name it. Um, let's name it crate. Okay, and again, it's complaining. Why? It's complaining that it doesn't have a collision shape 2D. But before we add a collision shape. Let's add a mesh, right? Instance 3D, which again, we did cover in a previous video. Uh, let's add a box, great. So now, oh. let's add a box. And now let's go and add a collision shape 3D, awesome. And this guy is complaining that he doesn't have a collision shape set to. So we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna set to a box. Automatically, since I'm using the default values for everything, uh, the collision shape is uh, the same size as the mesh instance because that's one it uses one meter as a, as a uses one meter as a, as a standard. So if we do this, right, we get this guy right in front of our player, and we try to walk it, ah, and it's not walking through. Why? Because the because I didn't tweak the properties for this for this crate, right? And it out and by the full is set to one and our player is also one so that's why so now if i take this crate and change it to crate now it's a crate now it's not a a one layer one again and again there you go i can walk right through it right and so now i'm going to come to the player and say hey now i want you to detect collisions against player three and there you go, now I cannot walk through anything again. And there you go, collisions on Godot, they work, they're very simple, they, they're just masks, layers, and collision shapes that you need to know how to do. Those are the three topics that you need to know. One last thing before we go, this on this project here, I do have my player, I do have an interact action, and I do have my player, um, um performing a ray cast on every time that i press the e key right and you guys can to know how i do this how i draw this little debug ball uh debug sphere you can check one of my videos it's called draw debug uh sphere uh, i have i have the code for that available on my patreon um 
or you can watch the video and just copy the code from the screen. I don't, I don't really care. Um, but if we look at the code right here, you can see that I'm, I have the code for a Raycast here. No, no, no. I have an exclude self, and I also have this guy, right? For example, and this, when I do a Raycast, I can use a collision mask right here. So I can say, hey, on this Raycast, I only want you to collide with uh, mask two, for example, right? So in this case, I only want you to collide with walls or I only want you to collide with whatever else, with crates, it doesn't matter, right? And and then if I play this and, and let's see, see, I, here I'm colliding with my wall, layer two. And if I, if I try to raycast in on my crate, it doesn't detect anything. So this is also cool because you can also you can easily um, use these masks on your code in case you're doing a raycast or something similar. It's super easy to work with, and that's all we need to know about crates, guys. Guys, uh, about crates. Sorry, that's all we need to know about collisions. And very simple. Oh, there you go. See, now my guy's colliding with everything, it doesn't go anywhere. Right, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, for more videos like this. And I guess I'll see you next time.